Hey everybody, welcome to Down on Backyard Garden. And today I'm going to do a garden tour. Now, there's not a lot going on out here, but at the same time, there's kind of a lot going on out here. So sit back, relax, let's grow. Okay, so I'm going to keep this garden tour completely real. I have not cleaned up anything, moved anything around, changed anything for this video. I'm just going to show you all exactly what's going on here in zone 9a in spring texas today the beginning of march Why don't we start where we always do right over here so, i've planted potatoes in both of these bins about a few days ago nothing's popping up yet but i fully expect in the next week or so to start having growth coming up potato growth garlic and shallots in here these are the garlics from the experiment that i did over the winter and they're still doing good now they're not as strong as say those other garlics that I'll show here in a minute, but they're still doing really good. This is a new bed. I took out that old bed that was falling apart, put this one in, and I have cilantro growing and some purple basil. Now that is the first time I've grown this kind of purple basil, so I'm excited to see how it looks as it gets big. But uh, I'm gonna talk about basil here in a minute because once you plant it, I'm telling you, the volunteers are amazing. Jojo walking the garden with me, oh girl. I've already planted a bunch of peppers in here. I'm excited for these. That's gotta go, it died over the winter. That's the mango tree that I started from seed that I did the video on last year. I up potted it and it's doing great. Okay, I'm really excited to show this. Now y'all know I planted asparagus. About two weeks ago I planted new asparagus, put that video out. And check this out. Ready? There's brand new asparagus growth right there, right here, right there. So the asparagus is coming on, along with all the marigold volunteers. And then that's last year's asparagus with a new one coming up right there. Totally awesome. And another one right over there. This is doing good. I've planted beans in here also. I planted the beans in there, which are bush beans, those yellow bush beans. It's just to put nitrogen into the soil to help the asparagus. But let me step back and show y'all how tall this asparagus is. I'm not sure I can really give, I mean, look how tall that is. It's like two feet above the fence line. That stuff is going nuts. Again, that's a, this is the second year for that asparagus. So next year, I'll actually be able to start harvesting and eating. Jojo just hanging out still. We have sweet potatoes already planted pineapple plant yes mom I said pineapple plant this time blueberries going I've got dill out here that's finally taken off rosemary and then check out the new growth on these rose bushes here or on that and then check out the ro the new and then check out the new growth on this rose bush really really coming on nicely same with this one you see the new growth I'm excited for those because they needed to be trimmed really bad over in this bed I've got all the eggplants planted that video has not come out yet but it will see how the mint is just going crazy this so that purple basil is really not doing good that's all right but look how good that tomato plants doing y'all it started to curl up so I put this clip on here to keep it down. But you can see inside, the roots are already sprawling all over the place in there. And that is exactly what you wanna see. At least that's exactly what I wanna see. Okay. <laughs> the Japanese carrots are doing really good. You see down in there, every tube has plenty. And they're starting to put on their carrot tops like those so I will go back through very soon probably later today or tomorrow and actually thin those down to one carrot per tube and if y'all don't know exactly what I'm talking about I'll put a link to the video explaining these Japanese carrots up right here in this bed I am going to be planting all the tomatoes I've already got two of them planted Took about three days before they started to actually stand up like that on their own and look healthy-ish. So I think once the, the heat kicks in, 
those will start exploding the way they should. I've also got the companion onion plant starting to pop up. That makes me very happy. Because again, onions, basil, radishes are great companion plants for tomatoes. The carrot garden here, or this carrot patch is just doing so good. Again, there's about six different types of carrots, maybe eight, I actually don't remember, in that patch right there. Now from there on down, it's a work in progress. But again, just keeping it real, I want to show you all exactly what's going on. I still need to come through and amend this bed. I'm also going to bury a bunch of leftover old food items in this entire area to just really jumpstart this area for all the melons and stuff that are coming. And that will be a video coming up very soon because I got to get all the stuff out of my fridge and freezer. Okay, I've got more dill in right there. And then look at that wasabi radish, y'all. That thing is huge. Like, I keep showing this thing, but it is an enormous radish. I haven't named that beast yet. Once they start to put on those flowers and those start to open up, these radishes are bringing in all kinds of beneficial insects, which will just help fortify your tomatoes. I mentioned basil earlier. I think it's incredibly important that you as a gardener know your plants from your weeds by sight. And what do I mean by that? Well, let me show you. If you just glance at this bed right here, you're just like, man, there are so many weeds in there, Chad. What are you doing, dude? Why aren't you ripping all those out? <laughs> well, so this right here is a weed. It's a grass weed. Yeah, get rid of that. But guess what all of those are all of these look at all that guess what all those are well those are marigolds but these if I zoom out all of that are basil plants basil I have basil growing everywhere in this garden and the beautiful thing about that is I don't have to go buy it it's already in here because these are all volunteers these are all seeds from my basil plants from last year. From these basil plants that were huge and left seeds everywhere. So once these basil plants get about two to three inches taller, then I'm gonna start moving them all over the garden and I don't have to buy them anymore. They're already here. But if you don't know what the plants look like, you just think, oh, it's a weed and you start ripping them out. I do not ever have to buy basil ever again because wherever I plant it each year, I let it go to flower, which will then create all the seeds, I let them fall over the winter, they do their thing, and when this time of year, they start growing. And then I start moving them all over the place. Now that one purple basil, I just grew to see a purple basil. I wanted it out here. What am I saying? Know your plants from your weeds. Let me give you one more example. This right here might look like a weed, but it's actually that right there. But it's actually sweet alyssum, another companion plant for tomatoes. So again, know what your weeds are versus what your actual beneficial plants are. And I'm telling y'all, your game's gonna keep going up. We've got our first peas of the year starting to come up right there. Some more weeds. And then all through here, I've planted beans. Beans and cucumbers that are gonna go straight up these trellises here. So that's exciting. These are the cucumbers that I had in the milk jug, and look how good they're doing. I really thought I'd lose all those, but they're literally every one of those I was able to transplant, and they're all doing really good. So I think once the heat hits and comes on and these 50s goes away, they're going to take off for real. All right, the container garden. All these figs are doing amazing, and I just saw this this morning. I already have figs growing, y'all. Right there, look at that. I did not notice those three days ago, four days ago. But yeah, I've already got figs going. Blows my mind. The citrus game. We've got citrus plants all over the place. These are calamondins. Another baby calamondin there. We got bees everywhere, which makes me happy. Look at all this growth here. These lemon or lime trees. This really old pepper plant is putting on new growth. 
all over the place. I'm already ahead of the game for the pepper game. <laughs> and then that banana tree, which I thought was dead. Look at that growth coming on. Container garden's doing good. This side of the garden's doing good over here. At least, I won't say doing good. This side of the garden has been planted, for sure. I'm gonna have one area of white scallop squash right there. Because if you remember last year, the end of last year, I said this year I wanted to really focus on the, on the scallop squashes because I can't grow them. I've never grown them. So I'm going to solely focus on only those types of squashes for the spring. At least that's my plan today. <laughs> but we all know that changes. I have a, a lot of dragon tongue beans planted in here. We've got Kahari melon seeds planted on this side. Armenian long cucumbers planted on that side of the arch. And then coming over here, we've got rampant cotti squash planted right there. And then a frugosa squash. I hope I said that right. Planted right here. Hopefully in a couple months, th this entire arch is just covered in growth and <laughs> melons and squashes. We'll see. I hope so. Imagine how awesome that's going to look. Lettuces that I'm going to let go to flower. And again, reason for that is lettuce is a companion plant for peppers. And I'm going to have peppers everywhere. Like everywhere. So this will just be an added bonus of a companion plant for this section. The garlic is doing fantastic as always. I'll put a link to that video right here on how to plant garlic. I did an entire how-to video for garlic for that section right there. So that'll show you all exactly how to do that if you're interested. This right here, I'm super excited for. These are my two new additions over the winter of beds. And that is a Blue Hubbard squash, yo, right there. Now, I'm growing Blue Hubbard squash as a trap crop because I'm going to have those white scallop squashes over there, two beds over but it's only about 12 feet apart. So I'm planting the trap crop of Blue Hubbard squash to bring the pests that are going to show up because I've already killed two cucumber beetles already. Uh, so they're out here, it's just a give me. I'm gonna have this one area to attract all the pests here instead of where I actually don't want them. So we're gonna see if that works, I hope it does. Plus, I've heard of Blue Hubbard squash is a, is a pretty cool looking plant and a weird looking squash, so why not? Let's have some fun. I've already planted some peppers in here also. We've got red habaneros, regular habaneros. I couldn't remember what that was. Hungarian wax uh, peppers right there. So I've got peppers going, and I already have, honestly, two tomato plants going. One was a volunteer from last year that I don't remember planting, but it's coming on like a beast, and one that I just planted in this pot like a week ago. Check this out. This is a yellow pear tomato, and it is, honestly, y'all, almost double the size of when I planted it. It's really, really growing. And then this is a tomato plant that I have absolutely no clue what tomato plant that is, but it is really coming on. I mean, look at that. It's actually covering up that pepper plant right there. This is a pepper plant from last year, no idea. Those are doing really good. I'm actually kind of shocked, I'll be totally honest. These are all pepper starts that I started from seed in December that need to get in the ground very soon. And this is the single seed challenge plant 2024. Look how tall that thing is. It's about three foot. These are the rest of the tomato plants that need to go out there. They've all been grown from seed. Just had them outside for the last two or three days, harding them off, getting them ready to actually get in the ground which will be coming very, very soon. And then the one last thing to show you all is this. Now I know a lot of people don't like these kind of plants, but to me, it just adds a little something different to the garden. And they're easy to take care of. Just don't forget to water them and they'll pretty much just take care of themselves. It's the succulents. I mean, look at how pretty those, those are. I love it. I've got some aloe right there. I also have two more aloe plants that I need to get that I need to get potted, but but yeah, everyone. So that's the video. That's the garden tour for today, the beginning of March, 2024. 
I know it doesn't look like a lot, but there is actually a lot going on out here. And next month's garden tour will look the exact opposite of today because there will be so much growing, so much growing. All right, everybody, as always, if y'all enjoyed this video, do me a favor, like the video, share the video, and subscribe to this channel if you have not done so already. Everyone take care, God bless. We'll talk to y'all again real soon. <laughs> Bye.